Um, yeah. Any other questions? I went on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, any other questions about this? Yeah. Um, hello, uh, Professor. I just want to ask why uh, why you choose uh, ba Baha right? I don't know how to pronounce the religion. Oh, the Baha'i faith. Yes. Why did I choose Baha'i faith? Yes, right. Why you choose that? Uh, okay, sure. I could uh, I could get into this. Uh, um, um, Actually, um, I grew up in a family uh, that is um, on my mother's side. Um, okay, we are half, my father's side is English and my mother's side is French. Um, and uh, my father is Christian and my mother is not religious. Actually, my father was not religious either, but he wasn't anti-religious, but my mom was pretty anti-religious. And it's the, the, my mother's side, because my parents are divorced, that influenced me the most. So I was anti-religious. And the reason was because my grandparents in France, they killed each other for religion, not my grandparents, but many generations ago, uh, they killed each other for religious regions, uh, Protestants and Catholics, they had religious wars and they killed themselves in the, in the name of religion. So we didn't like religion uh, and I didn't like religion. I was really atheist, strongly atheist. Yeah, uh, when I was a teenager and starting in university actually, uh, and I was a materialist, I, I really believed in materialists and I argued with people about it. I didn't believe in God, all of these different things. Um, I won't get into, it would take too long for me to go in detail. But basically though, after a while, I really started asking myself some questions. Um, I started to, um, um, I started to, to, you know, cause I saw a lot of bad things going on in the world. And basically if I'm a materialist, for me, it just meant then that you know, you kill a lot of people. All you did was change the molecular structure of their body. So nothing wrong with it. You know, molecular structure is always changing. Unit galaxies and stars are exploding all the time. If I kill someone, what's wrong with that? You see all the injustice, all the bad things going on in the world. What's wrong with it? You know, look in the big picture. It's just atoms moving around, molecules moving around and changing their combinations and everything like that. So, and I just couldn't um, accept that. So for me, there was something that is a standard of good and evil. And humans, we can't really know perfectly what is good and evil, obviously. So there's something beyond us. Um, I, I, you know, there must be something beyond us as humans that tells me that that is the standard of good and evil. So this really started making me think about God, right? About the existence of God and things like that. Um, but also I was in, interested in Taoist philosophy and I was reading the Tao Te Ching and all these things. And I ended up going to China, you know, and I was really interested in learning about Chinese philosophy. Um, and, um, and when I lived in Chengdu, uh, I, um, that's when I came to meet another Canadian uh, and he was a Baha'i. And, um, and there were some things about him that really um, moved me. Uh, his name is Sharam, his Chinese name was Xiao Wangzi. And he was a, uh, a student at Sichuan University. And I was a teacher at Sichuan Shiyou Guan Li Ju Gan Bu Xue Xiao. I was teaching cadres, yes. Teaching them English in 1993. Um, 
And you know, there was so much, I went to China and my attitude was, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So, Ru Xiang Sui Su, right? Follow the local customs. So I just wanted to, you know, really learn and follow how the local people do things. Well, in those days, everybody smoked. Like all men, they all smoked. So whenever I would meet someone, they would give me cigarettes. And then I started, so I became a smoker and I bought cigarettes. So we always were exchanging cigarettes all the time. I was just doing like other, following the trend, following society. And then the other thing was, they, uh, they were all drinking baijiu, right? They were all drinking liquor. And so every evening, and so I, I did it with them. And so the Danwei Lingdao, the leaders of the Danwei, they loved me. And every evening they had their banquets with so much food. I mean, now it's, I heard it's banned in China, but in those days, the, the amount of food was utterly incredible, you know, in Sichuan too, it was so good. So every evening they had their banquets and then they always invited me because of that, gambe, gambe, gambe. <laughs> so I was drinking with them and everything like that, you know. And I was having a lot of fun. I was having a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, my idea was, well, there is nothing. Um, I cannot judge, you know, I will never judge any other culture, or any other society. And in, actually, in those days in China, there was a lot of corruption. There was really a lot of corruption going on. And, um, and so even then my Chinese friends, they said, well, you know, there, no, they said, there's bad things going on here. You can't say that, oh, I'm not gonna, you know, um, uh, just do anything the way the, the local people do. And then they said, they even told me, you're learning our bad habits, they said. So my Chinese friends, they said, you're learning our bad habits. Um, and, uh, and so then my friend, Xiao Wangzi, my, my, and then he didn't drink. He didn't drink alcohol. I said, why aren't you drinking? He said, because I'm a Baha'i. And I'm like, well, you're stupid. You know, this is how you make friends by drinking. If you don't drink, you won't have friends. So I'm, you know, I'm being nice to people. I'm drinking with them. You're just uh, not being nice. You know, you're, you're not accepting their friendship and you're not smoking. I'm drinking and smoking with them and you're not drinking and smoking with them. And he said, well, too bad. I'm, you know, I will, I'm following my principles. I'm following the principles of the Baha'i faith. So I went on drinking and everything like that. And I said, oh, too bad for you, Xiao Wang. So you won't have any friends. I'm going to have a lot of friends. But then it turned out that my friends, we had actually a lot of the same friends, the same Chinese friends. And then I found that they respected him more than me because they he had principles. They said, I'm learning your, they said, David, you're learning our bad habits. And they respected Xiao Wangzi because he wasn't taking those bad habits. So this really got me thinking. You know, this really got me thinking. And yet, so uh, Xiao Wangzi was, you know, so uh, kind and so um, gentle and so um, uh, curious and so knowledgeable, um, you know, he really, so everybody appreciated him so much because of his virtues, because of his qualities, not because he was smoking or drinking the way I was doing. 
So that really, really made me think. That really, really made me think. Um, and through him, I learned more about the Baha'i faith. And there were many things, for example, that the Baha'i faith talks about the harmony between science and religion, which I agreed with. And also that the Baha'i faith says that all the religions come from the same source. They all come from God uh, in different times, in different ways. They appear in humanity um, in very different ways, but actually they all have the same origin. So they all have the same goal and purpose. So we should have no conflict between religions. And I really liked that. I really like that. Um, and the Baha'i faith says we should uproot all of our prejudice, our religious prejudice, our ethnic prejudice, racial prejudice, national prejudice. We are all one humanity, one family, one country. All the world is one country. We're all citizens of the world. And I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't matter. We're Chinese, American, French, Canadians, black, white. We are really all humans and that's what matters the most. Um, and so I thought that's great. And then, um, he said that, um, uh, and I, I learned that the Baha'i faith also says, so that's what we should do is we should learn to bring more unity into the world. Um, and we should do it in a democratic way. Um, no priest. We all have to learn ourselves. We have to learn, do it ourselves. Um, search for truth independently, not have any priest to tell us. Uh, and so I thought this absolutely, yeah. So I, I, I agreed with all these teachings. Um, and one day um, after reading the Baha'i writings, uh, then I decided to become a Baha'i. Yeah. So that was how I, and so through becoming a Baha'i, I then could actually appreciate all the religions and learn from all the different religions and avoid the bad things of different religions. Um, and, um, uh, and really also find how to uh, translate religious faith into uh, daily life, into social life, and try to help to make a better world. Um, so that's how I became a Baha'i. Yeah, that's why I became a Baha'i. Um, but of course, you know, there are others among you who may be of other religions or no religion, and you all have very, very good reasons for that. Um, and I totally, totally respect that. Uh, so that's another Baha'i teaching is um, the independent search for truth. So everybody needs to search the truth themselves, um, not blindly follow. Somebody asked, do you believe in God because you agree with the teachings in a religion? Oh, so Tom Zo, right. Or do, you, or do you have experience which convince you that there is God? Yeah, that's actually another good question. Um, and I'd say it's actually both. Um, actually, when I, when I became a Baha'i, I did not really deeply believe in God, to be honest. I believed with the teachings um, and, um, well, there were certain things, uh, there were certain things, but, um, um, but overall I had not had an experience that convinced me of the power of God, uh, before I became a Baha'i. I had prayed a few times, <laughs> you know, when I took the bus or horseback riding in the western part of Sichuan, in the high, high mountains. And I, I was riding the horse on these cliffs and I could look down and if my horse just made one bad, bad step, I was dead. And believe me, I prayed. <laughs> but I don't know if I believed in God at that time. But after I became a Baha'i, so the Baha'i faith has prayers. And actually there is every day you should pray. And at first I thought, no, I don't need to pray. Nah, I agree with the Baha'i teachings and that's enough. I, I, why should I pray? I didn't understand it and I didn't think it's necessary. So for a long time, I didn't pray. But then one day I decided, okay, actually the prayer is very easy. It's only like a few lines long. It won't take me a lot of effort. So I decided to do it and I did it every day. And after a, a few months, whoa, I just felt, this incredible power of um, confidence, certitude. Uh, and so then I really never, yeah. Um, so then I had this feeling of being in the, the, the power, the power of prayer, the power of God. Um, and I can't explain it. So for me, it actually came after I became uh, religious. 
but for some people, it would come before they became religious. You know, different people have different experiences. Yeah. The teachings of a religion can be written by very intelligent people. Yeah, so that's what many people say. Um, but um, such a religion just, uh, just, just invented by a very intelligent person is not going to last. Um, actually, most religions are not written by scholars. You know, very, uh, you know, Jesus was, uh, he was only 32 years old when he was crucified. So he was young, he had no education. Um, uh, the, um, um, the Baha'i faith, so the founding prophet, the first founding prophet, the Bab, he was also, he was a merchant, he was very young. He was also, basically, he, he spread the teachings for um, five years, and then he was shot. This was in the 19th century. So, you know, he didn't have time to elaborate some kind of scholastic philosophy. And he gave up his life for it. And then, then Baha'u'llah, who became the real founder of the faith, he was from a rich family in Iran, a noble aristocratic family. But because of his religious teachings, which threatened like the power of the leaders uh, and of the religious uh, priests, he was exiled, he lost everything. He spent 40 years in jail. Well, if you're really intelligent, you just won't do something so stupid as to do something that will put you in jail. <laughs> right? So, um, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, but um, religions have some, the world religions have something more than being a theory devised by intelligent people. Because there are many, many, many such theories, but they don't last. Uh, and um, the, 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 the test is that religions, if you suppress them, you put them to jail, you kill them, the religion will not die. But ideologies made by intelligent people, uh, they will, um, uh, they won't last like that. They will not last in that way. In fact, you have to force people uh, to believe in them. Have I ever blamed God? What if you encounter some problems that you can't deal with or have very bad luck after praying every day? Have you ever blamed God? Uh, yeah, yes, I have. Or I've expressed my frustration to God, you know. Um... um Yeah, or thinking that he has a very bad, he has a, a cruel sense of humor. Um, but for me though, when bad things happen, uh, and this is, a, this is one religious way of looking at things, is that we see that our life is made of tests. So there are tests along our way that help us to become a better person. So when we have bad luck, something bad happens, actually what's gonna happen is that bad luck, uh, maybe it closes one gate, something, it stops something that you wanted, but then what's gonna happen instead will be even better. So one bad luck for one thing is actually leading you to something better later on. So I had um, a, um, I had a, um, um, I once had a job, I was at Chinese University of Hong Kong. That was my first job uh, when I came to Hong Kong. It was at Chinese U and I had a contract job, not a permanent job. And I was praying and praying, wanting that contract to be renewed to a permanent job. You know, and I wanted it, I wanted it, I wanted it so badly but I didn't get it. 
I was so disappointed. My prayer didn't work. But later, I got the opportunity at Hong Kong U. And to, I have to tell you, my job at Hong Kong U is so much better than the job that I wanted at Chinese U. Much, much, much better. If I had gotten the job at Chinese U, I would not have ended up getting this better job at Hong Kong U. So that's why after that experience, I stopped asking things to God. I stopped saying, I want this, please give it to me. Rather I say, I leave it to you, up to you. Because what's gonna happen for me is gonna be, it's gonna be better than what I want for myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys might think I'm totally crazy. And if you want to think I'm crazy, that's totally fine. <laughs> Astonishing. <laughs> Does God ever talk to you? No. Okay. Now, uh, frankly, if, I, if somebody tells me that they hear voices of God talking to them, I would start getting a little worried, okay? <laughs> um, except, but I, I don't know. I don't know, okay? Other people might say other things. But for me, how God answers prayer is not through words, like literally a voice speaking to me, but rather it's ideas coming. So when I was talking about receptive imagination, right? So basically, you pray... And then something, an idea or something pops up in your mind. Um, or something happens. Something happens outside. So that's what I interpret to be the answer to the prayer. Um, that's how, yeah. So that's for me how the communication goes. I do not uh, receive voices uh, that come, you know, I do not hear voices. Yeah. So it seems like every experience of life is the best arrangement of God, right? That's the way that it is understood by religious people. Um, now then you could argue, and so I agree, I think so. But of course you could argue with that. You could say that is a very, um, but it's a win-win situation that way, right? Your life Yes, 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 yes. So I don't know, you know, I have no idea. I don't know. So sometimes I think, yes, that's true. And sometimes I think, no, that's not true. How do you develop so much faith, even if your surroundings are telling you otherwise? Prayer, prayer, right. So that's what is special about prayer. Because then you're, 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 commute, you're, you're in that relationship. Um, and I will just use the last two minutes to share um, uh, let me see here. Back to sharing screen because I wanted to look at one. Okay. Um, here is another prayer that says, oh, it's the same prayer, but here was the important thing. Vouchsafe unto me through thy grace, what will enable me to dispense with all except thee. This sentence, enable me to dispense with all else except thee. So that means to be independent of everything except for God. So that means no matter what other people say, it doesn't matter. Right. So I, I'm independent of that. Now, that doesn't mean I don't love others. On the contrary, I receive and I give as much as I can. Um, but um, but right. So when you're in a relation and and so this goes back to the idea of the mindscape. If um, this relationship with God is central in your mindscape, then you don't uh, worry. You don't worry so much about the other things in the environment. Um, right. 